Hey there, Heather Lou of Closet Core Patterns coming to you with the next video in our Joe Sew Along. Uh, if you're making the jumpsuit, great. We're about to make the pants. So you've already made that bodice and now we're going to be assembling the pants. This is going to be a much faster lesson. We're not doing any slot seams. We're really just putting the pockets together, sewing the darts and sewing the pants together. So this will be a fast one. Let's get into it. So we have already assembled our bodice and now it's time to assemble the bottom. So whether or not you're sewing the skirt or the pant, the first step of this is the same. And the first step is you're going to be sewing the darts. And I'm going to draw them in for you so you can see. I always mark my dart with a little dot at the end, and then I always start the dart, dart with a notch. So I'm just drawing these in for you so you can see them. And the function of a dart is that it gathers fabric and then it releases it. Right? So this is how we express um, volume and this is how we shape curves over curved areas. So we're doing that kind of in the tummy area and we like the way that it looks in the final garment, but if you, for whatever reason, don't want that kind of release of volume in your tummy area, you can make these darts smaller. So you could make them, you know, maybe half the size and really have them just really be as like a design line because what's happening on the front of the bodice is we have two darts up here. So the line of this dart matches up with the two darts on the bodice. So we want to keep that style line, but you could make it narrower. However, keep in mind that if you make that dart smaller, you have to account for the width somewhere. So just make sure, so you, because we want to make sure everything matches up um, in our final garment that these darts line up, that if you end up removing, say, a quarter of an inch in width, that that quarter of an inch ends up getting added to your pocket bag here so that we still have the same length of waist seam. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. The other thing I want you to keep in mind is that if you made any adjustments to the placement of the darts on the bodice, you have to make sure you make the same adjustment on the skirt or on the pants. So if you move those darts over, you have to make sure that you move them over here. Also, if let's say you used, I don't know, you were, great, you were doing some pattern grading and you used uh, the size 16 dart and then you wanted to use the size 14 pant, you have to make sure that you, again, shift those darts over so that they line up. So just make sure maybe you want to go and walk your pattern pieces if you made any adjustments and make sure that those lines are still going to be uh, parallel to each other when we sew the waistband and everything gets finally constructed. So to sew these darts, once again, the same for the pants and the skirt, we're just going to match up at that notch or at the dart leg that I drew in. And then right below the point is where right below that little mark there is where I put the bottom pin so I know before I get there how I'm going to trail the stitching off. And I'm going to do the same thing for the other dart and then I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. So there's going to be four darts all together that we're sewing and I will go see you at the machine and show you how we're going to sew these together. Okay, so here we are at our sewing machine. We're about to sew this dart. So I'm going to just start right at that notch and I'm going to back stitch at the end. And then I'm going to just try to sew in a more or less straight line, but as I approach that little circle mark, the little point marking the end of the dart, I want to try to really gradually taper off so that I don't have like a weird angle where the dart at, you know, ends. I want it to kind of try to be as subtle as possible. If you need help sewing darts, we do have a dart post that we can link to below. I'm just, as I'm approaching the end, I'm slowing down. I'm gonna to try to hit that circle really close to the edge and then I'm sewing off. And I'm gonna raise my needle, cut off a decent length of thread tail, and then to prevent that dart from unraveling, I'm gonna tie it. And then I can trim this and I'm not gonna worry about my dart point unraveling. So I'll do that for the other dart and then the other side, and then I'll meet you back at our pressing station. Okay, so we've sewn those darts and now we wanna press them towards center front. I'm gonna make sure I do that on a tailor's hand. It's gonna help me press that curve in and I wanna come around and do it on the right side as well. Right. 
And now we're ready to attach our pocket. So the pattern piece came with a little interfacing. We want to stabilize that curved pocket opening. Think about all the things you do with your pocket. You're touching it all the time. So a little bit of interfacing will help stabilize it. I just used a little bit of that stay tape that I showed you in the bodice video. So you're welcome to use that or you're welcome to use the included pattern piece. So we're going to turn our pant or our skirt over and we're going to match up the pocket bag. And we're just going to match those curved shapes. And then we're going to go to the machine and sew this at 5 eighths of an inch. Okay, so I'm, si I'm sewing that curved pocket shape. I'm doing it at 5 eighths right now. Back stitching at the end. And at this stage, you could go and press it, press the seam allowance, but I want to understitch it first. So I'm just going to make sure my seam allowance is pressed to the right side. And I'm going to understitch the pocket bag to that seam allowance. And again, I could press this first, but I'm already here. So I'm just going to understitch it. And I'm just going to make sure that I'm using my hands to pull the part, like keep everything flat so that I'm getting a nice understitch line. And I'm gonna understitch about an eighth of an inch away from the seam line. And just a reminder, if you haven't ever understitched before, understitch helps anchor one layer to a seam allowance, and it's gonna help this pocket from peeking out when you're wearing the pants. So this is a really important step and you shouldn't skip it. And there we go. The pocket bag has now been understitched. This is what it looks like on the other side. And now I'm going to go grade this seam and get ready to attach the other piece of the pocket. Okay, so to help re reduce bulk here, right, because we now have two seams right next to each other, right, we have one and two. Depending on your fabric, you might end up seeing that outline of that seam. And so to, pre to prevent that, I've got a little tongue tied, we're going to grade the seam and grading seams just means that you're trimming one seam shorter than the other. And you always want to trim the one that's furthest away from the outside. So since this is the layer that the world sees, we're going to leave this layer, the, the seam touching that one the longest, and we're going to trim the one closest to the body. So that would be basically the seam allowance of the pocket bag. And so this is where your applique and duckbill scissors come very handy. You can see I could do this with a regular pair of scissors. Just imagine this is a regular pair of scissors right now. Do, 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 do. But as I'm cutting, I might end up accidentally cutting the layer below. Applique scissors are awesome because they basically act as protection. So that wide bit stays there as I'm trimming and helps prevent accidentally trimming the wrong seam. So I'm just going to go ahead and grade this. There we go. So now it's graded. So now it's, you're not going to see that big, thick, hunky theme seam because we're basically angling it so that it's not as thick in one spot. So now we want to just press the pocket bag in place along that seam. And it's probably going to kind of naturally do this, but I always, whenever I'm doing this, try to roll the lining in very slightly, like, you know, a 16th of an inch, less than a millimeter so that you see a little bit of that front leg from the back. And that again, just helps prevent, see if you can see that, that little bit there. Again, it just helps prevent the, the lining from seeing the lining on the inside. Okay, so now we're gonna attach our pocket bag. So take the corresponding bag and it's going to be flat on one side and we are going to just match up this curved shape.
and I'm just pinning the pocket bags together. I'm leaving the leg free or the skirt as it may be. And now I'm going to go to the machine and I'm going to sew this in one pass at five eighths of an inch. So here we are. I'm going to just sew this at five eighths, back stitching at the end. And as I approach the curve, I want to kind of turn my work here. So I'm going to just try to do this a little bit more slowly as I'm turning the curve. That's the key to sewing curves is you just slow down. And I'm using my left hand to turn it and then my right hand to guide it. And then as we're straightening out, I can speed up again. Back stitching at the end. So that's the pocket. And the pocket is now sewn. I'm going to go to my serger now, which I, we don't have a camera on the serger, but I'll show you what it's going to look like once I finish this edge. So I've gone ahead and I have finished the edge of this pocket bag with some serging. If you don't have a serger, you should finish the edge with either some zigzag stitching or a bias bound or Hong Kong seam. You don't want to leave it raw. And now we are going to baste the pocket in place along the side seams and the top so that this whole thing basically becomes one pattern piece or becomes one piece to manip manipulate and you don't have this kind of bag floating around. So the first thing that we're going to do is just line up the pocket along the side edge. There's a notch there to help you. And then at the top, there's a notch on the pocket bag that should align with the edge of the pocket edge. So I'm going to match those up and then I'm going to pin this pocket bag in place along the waist seam. And then I'm just going to go and baste using long basting stitch a half inch here and here. And then this whole thing can be treated like one. I'm just going to do a slightly longer stitch here again at a half inch and we're doing it at a half inch so that I'll do it on this side. When we attach the waistband, just in case our stitching isn't super, super perfectly accurate, you're not going to see this basting line. Back stitch. And then I will baste the side seam in place. So we have gone and uh, totally assembled those pockets. They're all in place here. I'm just giving it a nice little press before we move on to the next step. You may want to go and just give that seam one more little hit of steam. And now before we go much further, we're actually going to assemble the back now. So we're going to bring the back legs into play. And I'm going to put them right sides together. Come saw. And you're just going to go ahead and pin these together. And one thing I really want you to pay attention to is where the notch is along the straight part of the back crotch seam. And I want you to put a pin here. And this is where we're going to do some stuff. We're going to stop sewing here. So I just want you to wear, note where that is. Otherwise, just go ahead and pin all the way along the crotch seam. And what we're going to do right now is sew from here to here, and we're going to stop. So we're going to do this in five, uh, at five eighths of an inch. So disregard this little bit here. <laughs> I think we fixed that for the final pattern. There was a little, um, seam allowance thing that we were doing. So you're just going to sew this at five. Oh, I'm in reverse. Sew this at five eighths of an inch all the way around. People sometimes struggle with curves, so just take it slow if you need to, and you're just going to slowly turn your work. 
We're going to go so past the double notches to the single notch. And then at the single notch, we're going to backstitch. And because this is a seam that gets a lot of stress, I'm sure at some point or another, ooh, I was sewing with a basting stitch. So I'm going to go back over this with a regular stitch. I forgot to change my speed. Okay, so what I just did, I accidentally had sewn the first pass of, of stitches with a basting stitch. Um, so instead what I just did to fix that is I went and sewed just next to it with a shorter stitch length. But this is what I want you to do with your project. I want you to sew the first one at 5 eighths and then I want you to sew a second line like a millimeter, two millimeters next to it, really close. And this is just gonna help strengthen that seam, right? Cause just think you're bending, you're doing all sorts of stuff in here, no cartwheels. You're doing all sorts of things in your, your pants. So you just want this seam to be nice and stable. So now what we're gonna do is clip the left leg right here. Okay, so this is the left leg. And remember, whenever we say left or right, we're always talking about how you're wearing it on your body. So this is your left butt cheek right here. This is the left leg. So we are going to clip the left leg seam, seam allowance only. Get up nice and close, right so you can see where I'm doing, right to that stitch line. And now I'm gonna go to my serger. I don't have a camera on the serger, I'm sorry. I'm gonna pull this out of the way and I'm gonna go to my serger and I'm gonna finish this entire seam right here with my serger all the way. And I'm gonna pull this out of the way and I'm gonna finish this in one pass. And then I'm gonna finish this with my serger separately. Again, if you don't have a serger, you can do this with a zigzag stitch. The most important thing for this crotch seam is because there's a big curve here, right here. If this was a neckline, if there's, this was any other seam, we would clip, you know, maybe we would clip like this into the seam allowance so that this could lay flat. You can never, ever, ever clip a pair of pants at the seat curve because such a high stress area, if you clip here, you're gonna end up with holes where you clipped. So what I'm gonna do instead while I'm serging is I'm gonna make sure that with my serger, I'm trimming. And so with a pant seam, you can trim it down to about three eighths of an inch. So I'm gonna trim this seam down to three eighths. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. Turn it this way. All the way down here, I'm gonna trim, 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 trim. But what I don't wanna trim is this seam allowance because in a little bit, we're gonna attach a zipper and we need to have this seam allowance stay the length that it currently is. So as I'm surging, I'm gonna come up here and I'm basically just going to, as it straightens up, I'm going to stop surge, I'm gonna stop um, trimming. And then by the time I get up here, I'm gonna be back to a 5 8 seam allowance. So here, same thing. I don't want you to trim anything off of this. I just want you to finish it. So if you are not surging, if you're zigzagging, what you're going to do instead is trim this about a quarter of an inch off and then great like taper off tool about here. If you're doing a bias bound, bound seam, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to trim this and then taper off around here so that we're not changing the seam allowance here. So I'll be back in a moment to show you what this is actually going to look like once it's surged. Okay, so I've gone and I've done that surging. And just to show you, it's about three eighths of an inch. I probably could have taken even a little bit more off if I wanted to, but you can see that I stopped trimming as I approached here. And so now what we wanna do is press the seam allowance and we're gonna press it towards the right leg, okay? So if it helps you to visualize your two cheeks in here, this is the right leg. So this is the side that we're pressing it towards. And here you definitely need some kind of rolled up towel or a seam ham, sorry, a pressing ham to get around this curve. I'm gonna go right up on the edge of my ham here. And I'm gonna just try to hit the seam and not the fat, like not the leg, cause I don't wanna press, you know, creases into my leg. And then if you want, you can even just press this into the 5 8 seam. 
And this section will make sense once we get to the zipper. So the back leg is now assembled and pressed. Now we need to do the same thing for the front leg. So just take that front leg that you sewed earlier. We're going to take the other leg and attach it. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to sew the seam at 5 eighths of an inch and then we're going to serge it to finish it. But with the front crotch curve, you can trim if you're serging. You can trim the entire thing. You don't need to, you know, taper off to five eighths here because we're not installing a zipper. There's no, the, 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 the width of the seam allowance up here isn't going to matter once you're done finishing it. So let's go sew this. Okay, so here we are at our machine. We're sewing this crotch, front crotch curve at five eighths, back stitching at the beginning and the end. Okay, so we're approaching this curve and I'm just gonna try to kind of straighten out my fabric into a straight line. It's easier to kind of manipulate the fabric and straighten it rather than turn the whole thing. But you can see here, I'm kind of getting misaligned. So I'm just gonna try to align the fabric. And then just like we did on the back leg, I want to reinforce the seam with just a second line of stitching about a millimeter next to the first one. And now I'm going to go to the serger and I'm going to finish the entire seam with serging, I'm going to trim off about a quarter of an inch, so the final seam allowance is about three-eighths of an inch. Uh, again, if you don't have a serger, you can trim it and zigzag it or finish it with a bias-bound seam. Okay, so the serge seam has been serged, and now we're going to press it to the right leg. So again, if it helps you to visualize, open up your pants. Here's your right hip. I had to kind of mirror my body there to understand what I was doing. Um, here's your right hip, and that's what direction we're going to be pressing this towards. Now the reason we do that is so that the seam allowances meet up and especially when you're making jeans you want them to line up because you're doing top stitching. You could also, if you do end up pressing them in the opposite direction, it's not the end of the world. You would just basically have, um, instead of the seams meeting like this, they would meet like this and that would actually maybe end up reducing a little bit of bulk. So it's not the end of the world either way. Okay, so once this is pressed, we're going to sew our inseam first. So we're going to grab our back legs and we're going to start pinning the front leg to the back leg. Now with your back leg, you might have a little bit of a point here. And so it can be tricky to kind of make those match. So all you need to do is just trim a little bit off and now you have a nice smooth curve. It's not going to affect the fit of your pants. And I'm matching up my seams. Like I said though, if you press it in the other direction, you would end up, hopefully you can see this, with it looking like this. But because I pressed it this way, they're going to be right on top of each other. And then I'm just going to pin down the length of the inseam. all the way across and then we are going to go to our machine and we are going to sew this entire seam at 5 eighths of an inch. Okay so um, I started filming a bit and then realized the camera was off so I, <laughs> here I am. Um, you're going to sew this entire inseam in one pass but I do just want to point out that you might notice that the seam allowance around the pant hem is not perfectly straight. There's a logic behind that. It's because when all of the seam allowances get pressed up let me see if I can show you, basically like this, right? You have your seam pressed up and then you have another seam that's pressed down. All of this will end up basically matching perfectly. But in order for us to have a lovely angle here, we'd have to 
basically true the seam allowances. So that's what you're seeing if you get confused. I, I tried to follow it with my stitching. And now I, you know, I sewed a little bit further and now I'm gonna go ahead and continue sewing all the way down the inseam. Okay, so now I'm about to uh, approach the crotch seam and you know, nobody's really gonna be looking unless <laughs> if you're having a great time. Um, so you don't have to stress too much about whether or not it matches perfectly, but I am gonna try to get this to match. And so one little trick for this is if you wanna just change your stitch length to a basting stitch here, just as you approach that, I'm gonna just switch back to a regular stitch length 2.5. Sew a bit, back stitch, and then I'm just gonna check and see if I match those seams. Yeah, they're pretty close. So I'm just gonna go over that basting stitch with a regular stitch. and then continue to sew all the way down to the inseam. Okay, so I have gone ahead and sewn, I don't think I, you're gonna get, get, get to see the whole thing <laughs> in frame, but I've sewn the entire inseam. And now I wanna press it towards the back leg. So I'm just gonna open this up. and then start pressing to the back leg. And then I always like to do it from the right side too, just to make sure. I mean, the right side is where you're gonna see that press seam, so. Okay, so the inseam is now pressed and now we're gonna do the side seams. This is quite simple. You're just gonna match up your front and back along the side seams. Starting at the waist, pinning into place. There's a notch around the pocket that'll help. There's a notch at the knee. And then there are some notches also at the hem. And then we're gonna do this for both legs and stitch them together at five eighths, trim them on the serger, and then we've got our pants ready. Okay, so we're gonna sew that side seam now at five eighths. And we'll go ahead and do the same thing for the other leg. Okay, so our pants are assembled. We've got our pockets, we've got our side seams. I went and finished all of those side seams with some serging. I am going to press now all of these side seams towards the back. And again, especially along the hip curve, it really helps to have a tailor's hand to help you get into that, press a nice corner. And we're going to do this all the way down the, both legs. Okay. 
Okay, so I have fully pressed my seams, my side seams, my end seams, everything's done. And now just before we wrap up this lesson, I want to sew the hems just so it's done. And then when we attach our bodice and do the zipper, it's like, yeah, there's nothing worse than being like, I'm done, I'm done. And then realizing you still have to do the hem. So the total seam allowance for this pant hem is an inch and a half. So we suggest that you press the first bit up about a half inch and then the second one, one inch. So I'm just going to use my seam gauge here. Make sure I'm pressing up evenly. Okay, and then the next fold is one inch. So then I'm just going to change my seam gauge to one inch. You could just use a ruler if you don't have one. And again, Taylor's ham, amazing. You could also use a seam roll for this. So I'm just going to try to be nice and consistent here. Okay, so our hem is now pressed under one inch. I'm gonna go over to the machine and I'm gonna top stitch this in place. And obviously you wanna do the other leg as well. So almost done. Okay, so I'm gonna hem the pants. I took the free arm off of my machine. If your machine has that option, I would do the same. I'm gonna do it from the wrong side so that I can make sure I'm catching my seam allowance. But I find some machines, the if you sew from the right side, the bobbin thread doesn't look as great. And if, the, if that's the case with you and it looks like you feel like it's just not gonna look as great. You can do it from the right side. You just wanna make sure you're being really accurate. So I'm gonna probably sew this at about three quarters of an inch. I know I'm gonna catch the seam allowance with that. I can see here that my hem got a little bit narrow. So one, three quarters of an inch will definitely allow me to catch that hem. So that wraps up our lesson on how to sew the pants for the Joe jumpsuit. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and I will see you in our next lesson when we talk about how to assemble everything together with the waistband and then finish it off with the zipper. Mm -hmm.